the great resignation, the challenge of talent retention in a post-pandemic labor market. A major problem facing human resources departments in many professional services organizations in Nigeria today must be what could be described as a fluid and unstable workforce. Indeed, a, a new buzzword that has crept into the lexicon of the workplace is the great resignation, an unflattering term for the widespread trend of employees leaving their jobs in the post-COVID-19 era. A number of push factors are causing employees to reconsider a long-term vision with their employers. Top among this is what is now popularized as the jackpot phenomenon. One social commentator aptly described it as a verb that became a noun. Many young professionals are leaving the country in droves for Europe and North America to either further their education with a view to settling down in their host countries, at least in the meantime, or take advantage of lucrative immigrant programs strategically structured to cause a brain drain in emerging economies such as Nigeria's. On the other hand, rising cost of living and inflationary trends is causing a lot of employees who otherwise would have stayed in their current employment to seek better opportunities elsewhere. According to a recent survey by PricewaterhouseCoopers, a global financial and management advisory organization, 71% of the global workforce will resign in the next 12 months if employers refuse to raise their pay. In the reference report, one out of five employees in the 44 countries surveyed said they will leave their employment if their employers refuse to raise their pay. Against the backdrop of the fact that this report was released in June 2022, it could be said that the findings are rather prophetic as far as recent trends in the labor market can be relied upon. But beyond the economic and jackpot factors, a huge chunk of employees are also leaving their current employment in search of career fulfilling elsewhere. According to the PwC report, 69% of the employees surveyed said they were leaving their job in search of fulfillment. This may be in the form of taking over new roles that would motivate them for more productivity or taking up opportunities that align with their long-term career goals or passion. In the end, employers, particularly those in the professional services space, are the worst for it. Disruptions in operations, having to hire, induct, and orientate new staff is putting pressure on human resources managers who are not certain when the new hires will make another move. To address this awkward labor trend, employers must begin to place a premium on their people and make deliberate efforts at talent retention. Whilst it is not considered that this would not totally obliterate the need for employees to move, however, it will significantly stem the tide and allow for movements shaped by other factors. It would also allow for proper skills transfer before employees move, unlike what obtains today when some employees have had to leave their jobs without adequate notice. Last year, a leading Nigerian law practice announced huge pay rise and allowances for members of its large team in a bid to tackle this problem. Other leading law firms and organizations have had to review working conditions and pay packages at the turn of the new year as a deliberate measure to guarantee talent retention. It, however, remains to be seen whether this effort would yield the desired result. The COVID-19 pandemic and its attendant economic crisis has greatly influenced the world of work in many ways. In a sense, this has led to an interesting dynamic in the workplace. Businesses looking to bounce back from the losses of the pandemic are unfortunately met with a labor force looking for better and or improved economic conditions to meet rising cost of living. Under these polarized conditions, loyalty often take the back seat as employees prioritize what some employers might describe as selfish interests. Yes, every bad situation is not without its positives. As skilled professionals continue to leave their employment, a door of opportunity opens to a large pool of unemployed workforce who are looking to kickstart their own careers. As one analyst put it, this may be the best period for you to get hired. So I, I just saw comfort. I just saw that comfort is joining us from the United States. And uh, as far as I can recall, the last time I was on this program, she was in Abuja. So I don't know if 
the subject of my pitch today. It's <laughs> <laughs> a case study. It's a case study. <laughs> <laughs> of, of what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> so, you, so, you think I have just had. Well, uh, I mean, your, your, your geographical location says you're not just it. <laughs> <laughs> no. I, I mean, I'm not Japan. Honestly, I'm, I I love Nigeria. Despite everything, I honestly love Nigeria. And tying it into what you have said about uh, the post-pandemic labor market, the positives for me are what we're doing now. As you said, I'm in U.S., but I'm on the show. You see, it's, it's helped us, all businesses, as much as possible to leverage technology. So I don't have to be in the office anymore to be able to, you know, what do you call it, exhibit my skills, put in, in my best, or what have you. Um, I, I would say that the issue for me of even talent retention now is actually the positives that technology has brought. These days, all you need to do is to probably sing well, I don't know, do a skit here and there, and you are rolling in some millions of uh, Raymond, have you considered this? Mm, so, yeah. all that so, burning so, so uh, uh, work, midnight candles. <laughs> <laughs> all that midnight burning candle now, as you can see now, all you need is a phone, some small talent or no talent, the right word or the right uh, 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 topic, and yeah. you, have, you become something. And I think, uh, don't you think that that's even more of the layer now that is <laughs> dealing with people? But seriously. Yeah. How are we going to deal with inflation, rising costs, and standard of living when um, there isn't commensurate pay? And what do you want the business also to do? Because they are going to these same markets that their talent are going to. So I, I don't know. It, it, it's a death kill at this point. The businesses have to, have to thrive. They have to survive. Yes. They need to retain talent. Yes. But the businesses are affected by the same thing that the talents are affected Absolutely. by. So Absolutely. I, I think this is what you know the World Economic Forum really needs to uh, you know at this point look at and say, yeah. you know, are we doing the best that we can for the citizens of the world? Remember, this is not just Nigeria that is even affected by this. It's yeah. really the, the world over. You know. It's human beings who are taking these decisions, who are making these, putting these markers, you know, who are causing these things to go up and down. Yeah. At what point are these same human beings who are the hem of affairs going to actually look at the citizenry of the world, the human capital of the world, and say, you know what, we need to give damn world a break? Over to you. Absolutely. Mm. Absolutely. I know during the time of Obasanjo, when Obasanjo was president, yeah. I think I was in secondary school at that time, yeah, yeah when Obasanjo was president. And eventually, Yeradua came, bridging that period before it got towards, towards the ending of Good Luck Jonathan's presidency. Yes. You know, things got to begin to get worse at that yeah. time. Yeah. See, now, during this period, you could see that real Obasanjo time, you, after the, that was post military rule yeah. 1999 you hear that you see that nigerian citizens had the opportunity of going abroad to study maybe for their masters and most times they come back home they get good job here yeah. even nigerians that study here too they get good job here and with good pay yeah. they rise through the hierarchy of their career yeah, yeah and they do very well but the moment it got towards the ending of towards the ending of good luck jonathan presidency Buhari time became worse on this bright time everybody's living so I believe if we get it right this way in 23 and things begin to take shape, some of these guys that left will come back. They will want to come and look for so, good opportunities. Yeah, yeah. So like the, the popular candidate we see brain dream will become being game. Yeah. So, so I think I think um, as much as I will want to agree with what you just said now, I also want to digress a little bit. I want to go with comfort, right? The what will shape everything is actually technology. Yeah. Just like he has said. So you see, during the pandemic, people had ample time because all those time you spend in traffic, you move from A to B and stuff like that, you can actually stay at home. People have ample time to use the internet to say, okay, I want to learn one or two things. I want to, you know, listen to one or two things and begin to discover self-discovery, which they don't have time because of the nine to five activities they do. So they begin to say, okay, so I'm working as customer support. I could be good as probably a financial analyst. Do you understand? And they begin to equip themselves 
in all such skill and there is no environment probably their working place do not give them that kind of environment in terms of capacity building and what have you and they have to move out they have to change course it's, you know the internet is meant to probably one skill you up communicate and also transact business just like you said there are people doing skit and they are making millions you mm -hmm. know they're mm -hmm. discovering their talents mm -hmm. that's number one mm -hmm. another thing you should also look into is the business owner, yes, comfort, you are right. You said uh, um, the business is also playing this inflation market and how do they want to make money when uh, the market is already high yes, yeah. cost and stuff like cost of living. But then we have a lot of opportunity that the businesses today are not thinking of how to use technology to solve problems. They are still seated in the normal you know, modern operandi of how business is being run. You sit in, under AC, you make policies that do not work with well, what the reality. You know, they have to leave their comfort zone, go to the market, identify problems, bring solutions using technology. And I bet you, it will, they will be forced to even develop their own staffs. See staff that has this capacity, build them up, expose them to human capital development. Then, just like you said, some government officials are sent to human capital development trainees and what have you, but now do we have them again? You know, there are a lot of things that are wrong, and I think we should be looking forward to using technology, yeah. you know, to marry a lot of things, see, uh, identify these issues and bring them in. Yeah, absolutely. I agree that the internet is also uh, a factor in this whole dynamic. But beyond, beyond that, I think the root cause of this has to do with a uh, global recession. Over the, over the last couple of years, the world, the global economy has been on decline. And you see its manifestation in issues of this kind. Businesses are unable to fully operate. Some have had to um, downsize their operation because they cannot, be able to make, they cannot be able to make even, you understand? So, and also the, the, the situation in Russia, Ukraine is also not helping matter because you, you can see that they also contribute to in a large scale to the declining global economy. Yeah. So sh should uh, we uh, say, uh, should we not say, sorry to cut him, but should yeah. we not say the normal way things are being run is already at the peak that we need to seek another alternative to run in the world, in the entire world, yeah. right? Yeah. Another yeah. way to run business. New problem requiring It's not just new problem per se, but I just think as the global economy improves, ultimately, well-being and cost of living conditions would naturally improve. And also the factors that influence some of these decisions, this movement across, um, uh, across like jobs, connected, yeah. exactly. to an extent reduce, so mm -hmm. that businesses can be able to function optimally. Exactly. While the movement, it will not be sort of, it will not be jackpot induced movement. Mm, not a, not movement, mass exodus. You understand, it's more of a career driven, career informed a choice decision. Yeah. Inform, yeah. Okay. So uh, comfort boots is next after the break.